the source of all provocation and violence is military occupation, isn't it? It robs you your identity, it robs you your rights. It's the state of continuous colonization, theft of land and resources. It's the state of racial domination that has been erected in Palestine for many years. And now there is international human rights consensus organizations, consensus that Israel operates a system of apartheid, apartheid. This is what instigates violence. This is the source of all evil. This is the root cause. Thank you very much for joining us here today and thank you for your address. Um, as, you, as you opened with, the um, four-day temporary ceasefire has been extended. Um, and this is something that's seen the release of dozens of Israeli hostages and over 150 Palestinians have now been freed from Israeli prisons. Um, when we have nations around the world, such as the United Kingdom, that voted against supporting a ceasefire, um, of course, we have ongoing discussions in places like Doha happening right now. Do you think that there is the possibility and appetite across the board for a permanent ceasefire? Well, I know there is such an appetite in Palestine and our position is clear uh, from day one. There is an ap appetite in the region and the region is not only concerned about the atrocities, and they are, of course, in, uh, in in Palestine, in Gaza, and all over Palestine, but they are concerned this will spread over. And you're seeing that everywhere in the region is at a tipping point. So, of course, the region is absolutely including Egypt, Jordan, Qatar, of course, uh, Saudi Arabia, everybody uh, is concerned. Uh, we, he we hear from the U.S. messages that the U.S. is also keen to move to a much more permanent long-term arrangements. Uh, uh, and we think the ball now is in the court of Israel. And it seems that Netanyahu has taken this uh, rather uh, personally because he knows the moment guns stop firing, all these guns will become political guns firing at him. And he might literally end up in court. And it seems that he has no interest of stopping this. So pressure is needed. And there is the other side of the Netanyahu coalition who uh, think this is an opportunity to finish off the job and to push for uh, a mass expulsion and ethnic cleansing. And they've been writing about it and they've been saying it uh, all along. So uh, more pressure, uh, especially in light of the success in releasing hostages, which is a glimpse of hope uh, from all sides. Uh, uh, in light of this, we are hoping that pressure will be not just by words, but by deeds uh, uh, on Israel and countries like the US I believe can actually uh, 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 turn Israel or uh, make sure that Israel goes in a different direction than it has. Thank you. Um, now the world watched the atrocities of October 7th and we've now seen over 15,000 Palestinians lose their lives since the onset of Israel's siege of Gaza. Fundamentally, this is violence that has overwhelmingly killed civilians and overwhelmingly children. We've seen in war zones around the world that violence becomes a breeding ground for radicalization and for hate. Um, you said in previous interviews that you believe the solution is to nurture our children with love and to direct them towards a better future. But are you not being too idealistic? How can the children who have lived through the destruction be oriented towards peace? It's our responsibility. Children are children. They want to play. They want to uh, be protected and they deserve to be protected. Children are not born by nature, <clears throat> hateful or violent. It's the context that provokes some people into some directions. And it is our responsibility to change that context, to force a change of reality. So our children can uh, uh, have a life that is different than the ones they have now. And I think we can. The Palestinian people are known to be very well rooted, historic, 
cultured, we are at the crossroad of civilizations. We are, in fact, the cardinal of civilizations. Allow me to brag here. We are. We have almost produced every prophet. Palestine is the birthplace of Christianity, isn't it? So with such a, and you know what's the main message of Christianity, and you know uh, that came from Bethlehem. Palestine is capable to heal. Palestine is capable to teach its kids love, not hate. And Palestine has done that many times. This is not me saying we, we may be able. We have done it in the past. But to do so, we want to make sure that we tell our children we did not leave their killers wandering around. Every war criminal must be brought to justice. That's why the ICC is very important. In the absence of domestic local justice, at least that's why we established international judicial system, to establish international justice. And we need to also tell them that there is a, there is a, there is a political hope and horizon. The context is about the rights. So yes, I believe if, if the context change, feelings will change. However, we also see policies such as the Palestinian Authority Martyrs Fund, which provides stipends to the families of those killed or imprisoned while carrying out politically motivated violence against Israel. <clears throat> Do policies like this not stand in the way of peace by incentivizing terror against Israeli civilians? No, it does the opposite. It does exactly the opposite. The Palestinian Authority does not pay for people who are killed, you're saying martyrs, uh, by Israel. It pays to their children, and it is our responsibility to make sure that the children of these victims are provided for, that they have... We were just discussing hope and love for children. Where do you want us to leave these children? For who? Who should pay them or recruit them? This is part of the Israeli spin and propaganda and Hasbara. It is our responsibility to take care of the children of these victims. And in that case, um, Israeli and Palestinian textbooks have both been found to contain quite skewed content. So, for example, from 2019 to 2023, the European Parliament passed four resolutions denouncing the Palestinian Authority for its content within, within textbooks. Does the education system also not represent a significant barrier towards future peace? Our education system is one of the best in the region and it's at international standards. And the EU has retracted all this and the EU resumes its full funding. And there was commissions to study and they came out with a couple of issues that we were discussing. This is again part of the propaganda that the pop or the reason why Palestinians are reacting is because of our curriculum. You see the logic? It's not because of the occupation and the colonization and the besiegement. And of course, we will teach our kids our story, our history, not the Zionist one. They do not want us to tell our children that we live under military occupation. They do not want to tell our children that we have refugees all over. They, do, they want to strip ourselves from our own history. So this is not going to happen. The Palestinian Authority is there as a national institution to make sure that our curriculum is a sovereign matter that provides for our, our children the truth about our history, our present, and our future. Um, I also wanted to ask um, about the fact that you've expressed frustration um, at the double standards of Western media. So you've been asked in, in, in many, many interviews now uh, whether you'll condemn the atrocities committed by Hamas. Um, and yet you've commented that representatives of Israel have not been asked to express similar sentiments towards the loss of Palestinian civilian life. But you are a senior figure um, that represents Palestine. Why then is it not a reasonable question to ask for your perspective on the actions of Hamas, who are essentially your, your political rivals? Well, it's a matter of principle and standards, not a matter of policy. 
In terms of policy, we're very clear. And we've been clear for a long time, for 30 years. And we have been the only clear side that we reject the targeting of civilians wholeheartedly. Not by words, by deeds. We have recognized Israel 30 years ago. We have committed in full to international resolutions and the two-state solution. We have committed in full to non-violence and to a negotiated settlement. So in terms of policy, no one can look me in the eye and tell me what is our policy. I reject to answer these questions on the basis of principles and standards. Because most of these interviews would have had the Israeli ambassador just before me. And the, the, the fact that they failed to ask the Israeli ambassador the same question, do you condemn the killing of 15,000, 75% of them are women and children, means that if I engage in the answering of that question, then I accept the principle and the standard that our life matter less. Right? That Palestinian lives matter less. That only, uh, only the Palestinians are expected to condemn themselves. That it's the Palestinians who are the instigators of violence. That's the whole idea of the question. Because it's about the question, it's not about the answer. It's about the, the moment you ask that question is a moment when you immediately assume that or want to convey to your audience, mass audience, you're talking about BBC and CNN and all those. The moment you ask that question is a moment when you give the impression that yes, the Palestinians instigate every act of violence and Israelis react. It's the other way around. The source of all provocation and violence is military occupation, isn't it? It robs you your identity, it robs you your rights. It's the state of continuous colonization, theft of land and resources. It's the state of racial domination that has been erected in Palestine for many years. And now there is international human rights consensus, organizations, consensus that Israel operates a system of apartheid, apartheid. This is what instigates violence. This is the source of all evil. This is the root cause. Everything else is a react. So yes, I challenge the mainstream media and we should all challenge this mainstream media because it's a game. It's a game of deceit that has gone on for a long time. And this applies on everything. There are standards. And by the way, this latest situation in Palestine has really exposed yet again, but in the most despicable way, the hypocrisy, the double standards, the selectivity. Do you condemn? Okay. Do you consider this terrorism? Let's agree on what terrorism means and how we define terrorism. And if you apply the same term on everybody, I will accept. But why do you apply this only on the Palestinians? Isn't what Israel has done in Gaza in the last six weeks and in Palestine in the last 75 years, the definition of terrorism? So when they ask me, do you consider this a terrorist and that a terrorist? I say, okay, you answer me, is Israel a terrorist state? So this inability to apply the same standards is something that we must call out and not engage with, and we must correct.